Between upsets and buzzer beaters, March Madness always delivers. Hello everyone and welcome inside the Cronkite News Studio here in downtown Phoenix for another edition of our Friday show of Cronkite News. I'm Matt Venezia. I'm going to take you back 25 years ago to one of the greatest moments in NCAA tournament history. But before that, we're going to hear from Noelle Blumel as she examines one of the remaining Final Four teams and its unique ties to the Valley. March Madness is known for its buzzer beaters. When we look back in history, Christian Leitner sent Duke to the Final Four, or Chris Jenkins winning the national title for Villanova. I got one for you. Bryce Drew, 25 years ago, created a Cinderella story for Valparaiso as Valpo upset Old Miss. At the time, Bryce Drew's dad, Homer, was the head coach for Valpo. Now Bryce is right up the road here in Phoenix as the head coach for GCU. I had the chance to sit down with the father-son duo to relive the iconic moment known simply as the shot. The shot heard around basketball. Does it still give you chills after all these years? Chills? No. Chills during the shot? Yes. As it was arched up high, it looked, Matt, like it was going to be short. And so I think that all the prayers in the building just kind of lifted it over. Because if you watch the rim, it kind of hits the top of the rim and then goes right on in. And so now when we see it, I just get a smile because I know the ball's going to go in. I remember us standing right on the uh, right side of the court over there while the first free throw was getting ready to go. The play then that happened was it was really a blur. I thought the ball was short. I went it short. You kind of kind of jumped to try to give it that extra ump. And so I felt like I was going to be short. It skimmed the rim, went in, and then I don't even remember diving on the floor. I don't remember anything to basically being on the floor. Two and a half seconds left on the clock free throws at the line. The first one is missed by Old Miss. You call timeout. Can you take us inside the huddle in terms of what was being drawn up? We just went through the possibilities of what might happen if he makes, if he misses, uh, what are our options and are we all prepared to do it? So it was really just a, a quick review and with the, with the hopefulness that he would miss it and we would get a chance to make a tie. And you could hear in the video of the shot, pacer, pacer, the play was being yelled out. What, where did that originate from? When he missed the shot, uh, the players looked over and they just yelled pacer. And that was the name of the play that we use for game ending situations. It's I felt the wonderful the because they didn't need a coach. Left. They knew exactly Long what pass. to do. Bill Jenkins threw three for the win. Go! Oh my, oh my. Oh my. Wow. And Bryce, 25 years later, Every time March Madness rolls around, you're still hearing about the shot. How does it feel to still be brought up in terms of one of the greatest moments in March Madness history? It's a special blessing. You know, um, basketball family, um, my brother coaches at Baylor now won the national championship. So we've been, we've been you know, our, our lives a lot of, have been, our schedules are entertained and, and around the NCAA tournament. So um, for have that moment in the tournament for something that we've dreamt of our whole life, um, is very special and now get to see the highlight years later, you know, makes it even more special. And on top of that, I mean, after all these years now, to share it in a father-son relationship, what was that like, being on the floor and seeing your dad and having that moment together? You know, we've always had a really close relationship. It's probably the reason why I went to play for him, um, you, you know, at Valpo. And at the time, it was very special, but as you've gotten older and now I have a son who's eight, um, it's even a, a more special to me. Um, I remember at the time I got a lot of messages from people, you know, from fathers and sons and comparing you know, our relationship and theirs. And, and I understood it, but after having my own son, I think I understand it at a different level, you know, just how special it was. Now, it was really special to me, but older brother Scott says, you know, if you don't go and play for dad, no more meals at home, <laughs> no more cars, you know. So I think Scott put the pressure on him to come. But it was a, it was a joy for me for four years to have him. 70 to 69, the kid performs another miracle. And one other thing about that pacer play, Noel, Homer tells us that was the best execution of the play they had ever run, including in practice where they barely even had a defense guarding it. The Suns host the Denver Nuggets tonight at Footprint Center, and with six games left in the regular season, we'll see if the Suns can build on these games going into the postseason. They'll still see the Nuggets one more time after this game and see if they can use that momentum with Kevin Durant now back in the lineup heading into the postseason. Our Noel Blumel sat down with Tom Leander, the Suns TV host, to get some of the answers involving the Suns and the postseason. 
The Suns made the NBA Finals just two years ago, but it was their run to the Finals three decades ago that helped lay the groundwork for the team's legacy. Even though they didn't get the ring in 93, they won the heart of the city, and Michael Donahue recaps how that team made a huge impact on the Valley. That old footage was fun to watch, Noel, and you can not only see how much the team has grown, but also the city of Phoenix as well. And there's an interesting story about how those threads came to be, and our Ryan Meza found out. Take a look. I might have to head on to the Footprint Center after this, Noel, and grab one of those myself. I'm a big Jersey guy. I as did Zach Gallon and Cattell Marte. Things are looking up for the Diamondbacks, who open the season with a four-game set against the Dodgers in L.A. Then they'll go down south to San Diego to see the Padres before coming home April 6th for their home opener. And Baseball players are very superstitious, and their pregame rituals can run the gamut from the mundane to the unusual. Logan Webb of the San Francisco Giants leans more towards the unusual, and our Jackson Webster gets a taste of the pitcher's pregame routine. Peach, yeah, I think I could get behind Peach as well. I gave that one a 9 on the rating. Yeah, and I'm with him on the coconut. That's not really my style either, but the OG seems to work for him. All right, that's all the time we have for this Friday edition of Cronkite News. I'm Noel Blumel. And I'm Matt Venezia. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.